Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Fusion 360 Live. I'm Tyler Kerkera. I'm a tech specialist here on the Fusion 360 team. You've probably seen me on uh, a couple live streams at this point, but uh, today's another one. So uh, what are we going to be talking about? I'm hoping to design one of these, uh, a bike seat. I actually have a, a couple of them here. Uh, one off of my uh, Cervelo and then one I used to use on one of my mountain bikes. Um, we're going to be talking about how to create some basic shapes in the, the, the T-spline environment or the form environment, best ways to control it, how to start from a sketch, how to bring it all the way to uh, kind of a 3D conceptual model. I don't think we're going to be uh, pleasing any engineers today, but again, we're trying to bring this uh, ultimate design to a more conceptual 3D model um, rather than a final like manufacturer ready piece. So um, let's get into it. I'm going to start sharing my screen here. And hopefully you guys can see everything. Let's move this up a little bit. All right, that looks good. So where are we going to start with this design? Well, I've gone through and done my best to imitate some uh, kind of industrial designers sketches here. Uh, let's throw those into our workspace. All right, so let's get this orientated appropriately. That looks good. And here you can see my sketch, um, just the profile view of, uh, of a saddle. Um, as we're looking at it like this, I also drew uh, a top side view and then a bottom side view to give me a little bit better perspective on these rails here. Um, I took some basic dimensions off of these as well, which I'm not going to show on the screen. I have those on a, a paper to the side here. Um, there are some standards with like these rail widths that, again, even though this isn't going to be manufacture ready, I'd like it to at least be uh, a kind of a, a practical model that again once maybe this was 3d printed or uh, mocked up we could go through and fit it to a bike um, there's also like spacing requirements between these rails depending upon um, the seat post that you're setting it on so i wanted to make sure i at least got some of that right so let's go through and insert the remainder of our views here and uh Unlike some of uh, my other videos, we're not going to do the old um, turkey from under the countertop like a cooking show. We are going to build this completely from start to finish. So um, there's good and bad in that, right? You get to see uh, all the slow spots and all the mistakes. But again, I, I think there's a lot of value in showing every little piece of it. So, you know what, I'm actually going to go through and remove what I just did. I'd rather have these inside of my component, right? I've already skipped rule number one. So let's go through and actually create a new component and then reinsert those while that component is activated. Hopefully it won't take too long. Good, let's flip that. I already said it before, but this is one of my favorite ways to just design anything from scratch, especially things that are more organic shapes, like what we're looking at now, more kind of aesthetically driven shapes rather than, you know, a very like mechanical looking design, something really square and geometric. Um, these sketches can convey a lot of information that would be hard to get otherwise. All right, good. Now we also want to make sure that these are to the appropriate scale. Um, before I do that, though, I'm going to save. And let's take a step back here. Save that as saddle. Cool, looking good. Now to calibrate these, we can just select the image inside of our canvas here. And I'm going to click on the front of this and this very tail end. I know I want this to be 280 millimeters. Let's do that to this top side image too. 
Same thing, we go from tip to tail here. 280. And make sure that those are lined up okay. I like to go to this kind of corner view here. You can see the silhouette of both of those and it looks like they're ending in the appropriate place for both of those. And let's do this bottom side view. And I drew all of these inside of another Autodesk product, which is actually free. And I suggest all of you play with it, um, especially the industrial designers in here. Um, I'm sure you already know of it, but it's called Sketchbook and it is incredible. Um, I've used a lot of Photoshop, not so much for sketching, but when I have used Photoshop for sketching, um, it feels like half of the right tool to to use it in. Um, Sketchbook is just, it, it feels so purposeful. Like it feels like it is really intended for that. Um, I'm also just using a cheap uh, bamboo tablet, a Wacom tablet with a, a little stylus to, to build these. Um, again, by no means am I an expert, but that certainly helps me uh, fake it. Um, let's jump back into our, our CAD design here. So now everything is to scale. Again, let's make sure that all of our images line up. So when we're referencing these, we're not uh, taking uh, two measurements from two different spots, or I should say one measurement from two different spots. So this looks pretty good. So let's jump into the uh, create form environment. So we have a bunch of primitive shapes that we can start from here. Um, we can also start from sketches and patch or extrude things, revolve things. What I like to do is start from a plane. I'm gonna select this same uh, plane here that we inserted this top view. And additionally, I think I'm gonna start building from this top view here. Uh, this just kind of came from experience, a bunch of trial and error to understand like well what's the best way to draw this shape like well is it from the side I, I don't know the top yeah that looks pretty good the bottom the front it's hard to say i draw in this form environment or the t-spline environment very much like i do in the solid environment where that initial shape that i'm creating imagine like that initial uh, 2d sketch or profile i'm trying to include the most detail that i can and like a, a silhouette view. So out of all of these views, what's gonna give me the absolute most detail of this part? I generally try and aim for the most kind of surface area to cover with that first extrusion or first primitive shape in this case. And well, this top side view is exactly that. So let's add a little bit more detail on this. Um, if you've never used this, uh, this form environment before, uh, these faces are, are kind of what is giving you the control. Uh, this is kind of adding more resolution as I add more of these faces, kind of reducing the resolution as I take more away. And I guess it's a, a good and a bad way to explain it, but um, the less faces, the less control you have, the more faces, the more control you have, which is, again, good and, good and bad. Um, you'll see as we start to go through and, and, and build the rest of the shape why exactly that is. Um, just based on my experience, I think I want this to be these kind of four faces across. I also want this symmetry down the middle. You can see this kind of colored line down the center, just so we're doing everything identically side to side. Um, I also wanted to set this up where it's only the width of this um, front part of the saddle here. I've had some issues when kind of scaling these shapes. Um, they seem to scale better when you're expanding the shape rather than compressing the shape. So I usually like to start with kind of the, the absolute smallest portion of it first. So now that we've uh, actually created something, now we can start modifying it. And in this uh, form environment, this edit form tool really does 90% of the heavy lifting for you. Or I should say, if, if you learn this tool and really get comfortable with this tool, this is 90% of your workflow. Um, now it is kind of it's hard to master. Um, you'll see when I select a like a face or 
a vertice here, I get this triad that you've seen in other workspaces. But understanding what each one of these things does can be kind of confusing. You have a, uh, a couple different ways to modify, scale, move, um, rotate. And we're probably going to use almost all of those in this, uh, this design here. So let's go through and, and start modifying. Um, I'm going to use this uh, kind of move command here to start. I'm going to select these outside vertices to get me into uh, the position I want to be in, something just rough. And I also want to ensure that I'm in this top side kind of orthographic view here. You'll see as we continue to design and manipulate this uh, T-spline shape, we are going to almost always stay in an orthographic view. It's, it's much easier to control your shape and kind of get to an in, intended uh, completion or, or finish line by doing that. Um, you'll see also with this uh, edit form tool, I can select faces and lines as well. So we'll, we'll get there as uh, continue designing. So this, I'm just doing my best to kind of match this shape. Doesn't need to be perfect right now. We're going to do uh, a lot more editing as we go along. Let's squeeze that a little bit this out a little bit. See if you double click on these lines to you can select the entire segment. I'm gonna pull that up a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Not perfect, but again, we're gonna go back and, and edit quite a bit of this. So now we are going to jump to my right side view. And what I'd like to do is align the top of this shape with this profile. So kind of this uh, sweeping cut on the top here. So I'm going to do that by selecting these entire line segments and then just dragging them up. Dragging them up. Again, I'm still not really concerned with perfection here. We're going to go back and do a whole lot of modification. And towards the end of this design, we're going to break out of this form workspace and talk a little bit about 3D sketching, um, just surface modeling, some other processes I use to get to uh, have a final concept of this. All right, we're looking good so far. Another interesting way to potentially create this design is actually creating a 2D sketch along the profile of this uh, of this like kind of uh, industrial designer sketch underneath here, and using something called the pull tool. You can use this pull tool to actually kind of like uh, link one of these surfaces up to a 2D sketch, and that might give you a little bit more precision. I thought in this case that this process was easier. Actually, I didn't even try that other process, but something that I did consider in this design. Um, so now I'm going to go through and kind of refine this shape. Get a little bit more granular with this detail here. All right, looking good. And of course, past this point, you can always go back and make changes if necessary. You'll see too that I'm not using any other move tools besides these up, or I should see these should say these like axial move tools where I'm not using these like full pan tools. Uh, again, it'll introduce some more problems. Um, you'll hear a lot of like the true, true like surface modeling veterans or like surface quality veterans talk about like a general flow that you want to create between all of these lines, all of these faces, is that you want to do the best you can not to have vertices that are kind of like squiggly and make these like M or W shapes here. Um, the highest quality surfaces are going to be really square. And 
that's what we want to try and aim for, especially in this initial design. So we want to try and not pull things out of square. So let's go through and add some more detail to this. I'm going to select these edges here. We're going to start to kind of bend the shape downward. And now we're just going to match kind of this bottom corner, this design. Let's see how that looks from the top. Doesn't look too bad. Excellent. And then from here, what I'd like to do is kind of patch these two sides together. So to do that, uh, let's make sure that that last move made it in there. Say OK. I'm going to turn my canvas off here. And to patch those two sides together, we'll introduce a new tool called Bridge, where it'll bridge an entire line segment to another. So I'm going to select one side. I'm going to select the other. It gives me some additional options here. And uh, the most important one is faces. And that's saying, how many faces is it going to add to connect these two sides? And I'd really like it to equal the same amount of faces on the top. So I have four crossing the top. I'd really like to have four crossing the bottom here too. So I'm going to say OK. And that looks pretty good, right? Um, our shape is kind of squished itself together. If we go back to our original view here, it's kind of, again, pinched itself together. But we, we can always go back and fix that. Um, one issue that I see here is, well, this hasn't closed. Um, there's probably a better way to do that. But in this case, what I want to do is just open this up a little bit so I can see. And then we're going to use another tool here. And it is called Fill Hole. I'm just going to select all of those surfaces. Let's see which of these is going to work best for us here. Yeah, that doesn't look great. All right, well, let's start with this, and then we're going to go through and make some modifications to that patching. So another rule of thumb that you want to avoid is um, kind of creating star patterns or uh, like a, a, a triangular pattern. What it does is creates kind of weird surface deformations and reduces quality of surfaces. So an easy way to fix that is under this modify tool, we have this option for inserting points. So from here, what we'd like to do is try and find some way to kind of remove that triangle from this design. So how are we going to do that? Let's start by maybe adding a connection here. OK, that's starting to look a little bit better. Um, Maybe we want to add or remove these segments here. So now that's four-sided, that's four-sided. Let's go back, insert another edge from, oops, not insert an edge, insert a point from here to here. We might have to break our symmetry to do that. Let's try that. So clear symmetry, OK. Insert point from here to here. Don't make a liar out of me. Let's uh, maybe we can remove some more segments here to do exactly that. That kind of fixed this top portion. Maybe we'll go through and insert points from here to here. Well, it's of course giving me a hard time. Maybe we will move that segment. No, let's remove this. Actually, that kind of worked. I'm going to go back and reapply my symmetry here just to make sure that this is going to happen to both sides. So I'm going to remove this. And now what we can do is insert a point from here to the center point here. Let's say OK. We're going to do that same thing from here to the center point here. OK. And I made that process look a little bit ugly, but it got me to the appropriate spot where now, instead of that star, now we have a bunch of 
kind of square connections here, right? We have a bunch of four side connections meeting together. And that's ultimately what we want to get to. So excellent. Let's go through and do that same process to the front. And let's make sure that we're just moving that down a little bit. And let's fill the hole. Perfect. Looks like we have that same issue here. Let's see if any of these other patterns will make it any easier for us. Maybe we'll start with that. Let's see where we can make it. Okay. And that was a little bit easier. So again, a bunch of four-sided faces here. That's exactly what we want. It's kind of a, a fun puzzle through that process. But um, now that we have a, a totally patched shape, right? If we f went to finish form, this would be a complete solid because again, inside of this T-spline environment, when you patch all surfaces and your object is watertight, when it's exported, it is then a solid object. When there's a hole inside of it is when it is uh, becomes a surface. So um, let's turn our canvases back on and make sure that uh, we didn't completely destroy our shape. Um, I'm going to select these all these top shapes here and kind of scale them out a little bit. We'll do the same here. That does not look perfect. Let's do that to this. A little bit more here, maybe a little bit more here. Let's continue that process all the way through. Okay, that doesn't look too too bad. Kind of looks uh, lumpy and strange in the back. So let's uh, let's figure out what's happening there. Um, before we do that, let's make sure that this shape is in a better spot. And we're getting uh, again these more like lumpy surfaces which isn't uh definitely doesn't add up to good surface quality so another way i like to design is jumping into this box view so under utilities here there's an option for display mode and you can move to a box view which displays kind of the underlying architecture of this surface where when you're creating these surfaces think of it as a bunch of tension points where we can see the most tension on these surfaces are the kind of vertexes that are furthest from another vertex. So if we go to smooth display, you can see these kind of widest faces are the ones that were most stretched by these boxes. Um, and yeah, let's um, let's use this to kind of drive a, a better shape for our design. So where I was talking before about kind of straight lines create better surface quality. Um, let's straighten these out using this scale tool here. That looks a little bit better. Let's make sure that there's some kind of general flow to where this surface is. That looks a little bit better. Drag this down a little bit. Let's do the same with this. And this is the part where you could spend a week and a half on a design. Still probably not be pleased at the end of it. This is also a good place to go through and uh, evaluate those, uh, those kind of faces for these, uh, these triangles. Um, I see in this instance that, well, something kind of revealed itself here. And maybe I actually want to go through and remove that line segment. That's OK. You can see now that this is creating this uh, 
kind of well, T shape. That's why I call it T splines. Um, that's that's okay. Um, in this case, we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about that. Let's keep developing here and refining. This is also the process that it's kind of like watching paint dry. So uh, I won't be offended if uh, you fast forward this part. All right. Starting to look a little bit better. From here, I like to jump between all of these different orthographic views. You see, I have kind of a weird surface there. That probably came from our deletions. And you can see we have uh, the ugly triangle in there too. Definitely something that came from what the way that we were creating this shape before. And what I might do, let's see what would be the best way to fix this one. Don't think removing this. Uh, let's go back to inserting a point. Let's back out of that. Let's try it again. I had a selection in there that I did not intend. So maybe that. It's giving us a funny effect too. Someone's probably watching this and just saying like, just do the right thing. I can see it in front of me. You know what? We might just leave that triangle in there for now. Yeah, I see how those segments are broken apart. This is where you have to be very cautious too with what you're removing from these designs. I think I might just leave it that way for now. Let's end up doing that. So I'm gonna jump back to my smoother view here and see how our shape is looking. Honestly, it looks pretty, pretty good. Let's make sure that fit looks nice. Uh, maybe we want this to come down a little bit more in the back here. Actually, I'm going to move this whole line segment back. And I have hotkeyed the edit form tool, so if you just see that edit form screen popping up uh, often without me pressing anything, that's what that is. Um, to add a hotkey to something, I can go to the edit form tool here and I'll see this little menu button, these three little dots on the right side. I can go change keyboard shortcut and assign that to pretty much every tool inside of, uh, inside of that library. So let's go back and see that that shape is matching. Good. I still don't like how this looks kind of square here. Um, I imagine that has to do with this and this. That looks quite a bit better, actually. I'll push that inward a little bit more. That looks significantly better. Okay, good. Um, I also want to kind of push this center portion up a little bit. Um, the way that mine is shaped has kind of a, a spine. See if you can see it here. Um, you can see it's out of like concave to the center. I'm going to create a similar shape. It's not going to be Oops. It's the right place here. There we go. And I'm going to push that up. Looks like I had the wrong selection. Let's try that again. Yeah, I 
I don't like the result it is giving me there. Maybe I'll select one of these vertices and try it that way. Good, that looks a little bit better. Pull this up a little bit. And yes, I like that shape that we're creating. It will go a little bit deeper. There we go. Looks pretty darn cool. And it suits the uh, the sketch that's lying underneath it. So that's our ultimate goal. I like the kind of profile from each view. Let's go to our front view as well. That's not something that we've seen. That looks good. I was considering too, to bring a mesh model in here to measure kind of the ergonomics in comparison to a human body, but uh, uh, a mesh scan of someone's uh, butt in a live stream, I thought that might be misconstrued for something else. So decided to leave that portion out but I digress let's uh let's keep working here so um, I think this uh, this form is mostly done and I can always come back and edit this if I want to add some more detail or I realize you know what this shape just isn't isn't suiting the design that I intended but I like how it looks for now and I'm going to say finish form you can see when I did that, now it's converted this to a solid. Under my bodies here, I can see it is set as a solid, and I can do whatever I want to this now. Um, but the next step I'd like to take is to start to build these rails. Um, and again, I'm, I'm done with most of the T-spline portion of it, so you can kind of mark this video here. Um, now we're going to move on to 3D sketches and uh, kind of more manipulation of this solid. So um, I'm going to start by creating an offset plane to the width of the center part of these rails. So what I want to do is set this center plane to um, the width between these rails here. This is the only measurement that like that has to be exact. So I want to I want to start with that portion of the design. So what is that width? It looks like 45 millimeters. So this, I'm just going to type in 45 over 2. Looks good. I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. We're going to be using 3D sketches, so I'm going to make sure that 3D sketch is selected in my sketch palette. And for this, we're just going to use line segments. Uh, this is uh, this is first portion, the, the pretty easy part. Um, and I don't have any set dimensions for the rest of these rails. I just want them to fit something close to um, like just the ergonomics of this seat. Again, I told you I'm not going to be pleasing any engineers here. But I do have uh, just kind of a general design for this. So I know that I want this to be pointing out at about 15 degrees. I want this to come up and match my sketch here. And let's see where that ends on the seat. That looks perfect. And now I want this uh, remaining portion to not go back at an angle. I just want it to go um, a perfect parallel to the center, kind of center axis of the seat. So I'm gonna say reset triad orientation and you can see that that plane has now flattened. And I'm actually gonna go up at the same angle as that other line here. Let's make sure that that intersected the seat. Looks like it did. Um, actually, I might go up at a steeper angle. Not really liking where that ended. So I'm gonna take a step back, and draw another line segment off of that point. Perfect. And get a little bit longer. Again, I just want to make sure that that's intersecting the seat. Uh, that's good enough, I think. OK, we'll leave that. Now with this front section, same thing. We want this to follow this path. But it does taper in a little bit. And with this one, I might actually use my bottom sketch. I almost forgot that I had that. 
So from here, let's taper this to the angle of, of this bottom rail. And I'm going to follow this here. Select somewhere about that point, reset my triad. And then again, we want to go perfectly straight forward to find this kind of like locking mechanism at the front of the seat. Is where we want these to ultimately nest is in this kind of plastic catch here. Same thing with the back, they have these kind of more independent catches at the back. But you can see how these rails turn almost parallel to, again, like the, the center axis of the seat. Same thing with the back. Um, that's uh, something that I've seen with most all of these. So that's uh, a standard that I want to try and follow here. So that looks good. Maybe we'll try and just make these also parallel to the ground here. Let's see how that looks. Pretty good. My only concern is that these rails might come in contact with each other since this is so close to center. Um, let's see at least generally what that width is here. Yeah, I think that's going to be a little bit too close because those rails are going to be a seven millimeter diameter, I think I said. So let's let's take a step back. You can drive these 3D sketches with uh, dimensions, but it's kind of difficult. Um, they're going to be going through and making some modifications to it. I can go through and use the move tool and just move kind of these points, but um, I'm going to do my best to get this in the closest orientation as possible before I do that. So let's that. Yeah, that looks good. We want to turn this plane at an angle. Perfect. So let's jump back to this orthographic view. Do something like that. Reset our triad. Drop that somewhere about there. Let's make sure. See how close to center that is. That looks a lot better. Good. And I'm happy with all of these points actually where everything is intersecting. See, that's close enough to where we were hoping before. Um, what I can do is select these points and just move them, as you see here. So if I did want to modify this, that would definitely be the way to do it. I could select, select, press M on my keyboard for move, and then just kind of move the orientation of these to better match my model. Let's make sure that that's not totally breaking our design when we do this. Yeah, looks good to me. So now what I want to do is simulate the bends of these pipes. So I could use this fillet tool, select each corner, and let's pick something that looks right. Maybe 15 millimeters. I like the look of that. Press enter. I'm going to say finish sketch. We're going to go to our pipe tool to then to fill this path. Section size is seven millimeters, perfect. We don't want to cut, we actually want to create a new body out of this. And there we go, we have our, our bottom rail now. Let's hide our canvas here so we get a little bit better perspective. So again, I want uh, this front end to nest in a kind of like plastic catch at the front, and I want something similar to happen at the back. So let's go through and design that little plastic catch. I'm going to create that on this center plane. And um, I'm going to freehand this. I don't think uh, I'm not going to reference anything else for now. And I want to keep this with a kind of similar arrow shape as the rest of the saddle. I also want to make sure that this is passing through this entire design here. I think that looks good enough. We're going to go through and make some modifications to this in a second. But um, I'm going to use my extrude tool now to pull this out. I want this to go symmetrical. 
I want this to also be a new body. So what I'm most concerned with is that we have enough material on the side of this rail here. Um, I can ignore it kind of sticking out of the front of this part for now. Let's actually add a little bit more material to that. Looks good. Now, how do we fix the front of this and make it not point out of the front of our object? Um, I'm going to use this little trick here, and looks like I might have moved one of my bodies. We don't want that. Um, I'm going to select my plane, use this draft angle to draft this front edge, or I should say this like left and right side edge it a little bit more forward so that was a little bit a little bit dramatized there you can see that the side of our rail is now sticking out we don't want that we just want this to not be sticking out of the corner of our seat and that looks pretty good so i'm gonna say okay we're going to uh, now use this shape to cut this shape. So you can see that this body is just a giant wedge inside of my saddle, which, um, again, I know I said this is going to be a concept, but it makes it really hard to um, get this shape to like blend into the bottom surface here with fillets. So what I can do is use my combined tool. I want to select that kind of wedge shape that we have here. I'm going to use this saddle as our tool body. I'm going to tell it to cut this shape. I also want to keep the tool because the tool is our, our saddle. Um, we built it for more than just cutting this little uh, bottom catch here. So let's let's make sure we keep it. But now you can see this body is like perfectly formed to that C shape. Looking pretty good. So again, let's continue with that kind of arrow design. Let's add some fillets to this guy. We want a little bit more. Let's see how that's fitting with that rail. I think we could probably use some more. And some more. And it looks like this shape is dropping farther than necessary below this bottom rail. I'm actually going to hit cancel. Go back to my timeline here. Just to uh, adjust where the bottom of this shape ends. So actually, let's remove that connection. Kind of simplify this a little bit. Let's make sure that this spline is tangent to this face. Sweep that up a little bit. I'm going to say finish. Hopefully, I didn't break my design. It didn't. Awesome. Go back to our, our fillet process here. That looks really nice. To make sure that that's added to the other side as well. Okay. And I imagine that this catch is actually going to be molded into like the bottom of this seat pan here. So I am also going to add a fillet around the exterior of this if it allows me. Oops, I know what I've done. So this is still a separate body, and I was trying to add a fillet to it. Uh, at this point, I'd actually like to combine this body to the actual seat. Um, before I do that, I have some foresight of maybe needing another um, kind of separate portion of this body. So I'm going to copy it and paste it just so in case I do need this body again, um, I, then I, I have it minus these uh, it's kind of bottom catches. Um, the shape is complex as this. Uh, it's just going to be nice to have a, an extra version of that. It, it's very much like in Photoshop or, or Illustrator where like you've made it to a certain part in your design. Rather than saving a separate copy of something, you'll just literally like copy it and almost create an artboard and continue designing to the side of it or copy it, put it on a layer and hide it. It's exactly what I've just done here. So now that I've done that, what I'd like to do is combine that with this body. 
instead of cut, we'd like them to join. I'm going to say OK. Now we can go through and start adding our fillets. Hopefully it won't give us a hard time now. I think I was the one who broke it last time. It looks like we didn't actually combine our two surfaces here, so let's make sure we've done that. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Take a step back. So I keep saying keep tools. Uh, what it was doing is creating kind of duplicate versions of those bodies. So I'm going to say OK. Now you see we just have one body for all of those things. Let's try this a third time. You can see usually when uh, um, you, Fusion gives you an error, it's because you've done something wrong. <laughs> At least in my case, that's how it seems to be. OK, that looks good. See if it'll let us fill up this outside. Um, it's giving me an error with one of these connections here. Let's see if we can do a smaller. Now it's weird, it's still trying to fill it in the wrong direction. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to troubleshoot this. Might just end up moving along here. I think that's what we're going to end up doing. Yep, let's do that. Let's keep moving instead of dealing with the semantics of fillets. That looks honestly not that bad. I kind of like it. Um, on the seat that I showed you, there is this kind of kind of coarse separation between that uh, seat. Uh, what it, would you call it? I don't know, that like seat catch or seat panel and uh, this rail catch. Let's go through and do the ones on the back side here. So I think in this instance, the best way for me to sketch this is to create a plane along a path. I'm going to use this original sketch here to do that. So I'm just going to create a plane on this section. Create a sketch. Um, let's turn off our 3D sketch here. And I'm just going to create a cylinder around this. I'm going to extrude that cylinder into this shape. I'm going to hide this rail so then I can just say join and kind of skip the step that we we're doing before where I had to combine the two surfaces. Now I can just join that directly with that solid. I'm also going to now mirror this to the other side. I'm going to do that by just selecting the feature in my timeline here. Let's go to mirror plane. OK, awesome. That looks perfect. Let's go through and add a fillet to this. Bam, that looks great. Let's add our rail back in there. That is looking wonderful. We also want to make sure that we have a rail on both sides. So let's mirror that to both sides. And that's starting to look like a bike seat. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with that so far. And I know I'm moving fast here, but um, thankfully with YouTube, you can slow me down or speed me up. But I want to make sure I can get all of this in before the end of this live stream. So that's all of the kind of separate components that I wanted. And I'm happy with that. Now in my design, there's going to be kind of a, a top cushioned section and then a kind of like seat pan that sits underneath it that's probably going to be molded in plastic. And right now this is just one continuous solid body. So let's, uh, let's talk about a clever way of how we can separate kind of those two portions. So what we can do is create a sketch on the center mark here. I'm going to use my spline tool and just kind of roughly outline this shape. Excellent. So now you can see I have this spline created, and I would like this to be 
kind of an even spacing above the kind of like profile silhouette here. So you see, I'm just trying to create, uh, well, just what I said, an even spacing in between. Looking good. And I think that that is nice. That looks really good. So now what I'm going to do is go to my surface uh, design space. I'm going to use this extrude tool and extrude that sketch symmetrically so that it passes through the entirety of that saddle. OK. Now I'm going to say split face, which is under solid here. I can say split face. You can see that I hid that other body that I created. Um, I don't. I want that to be exactly as it is. I don't want to uh, affect that one yet. Again, I want that to be like the original shape and body. So uh, I'm going to select all the faces here that I want to split. OK, looks good. I'm going to tell what tool I want to use to split it. Say OK. And now you can see I have that kind of perfect line around the outside where that seat pan would sit. Now what I can do is just select these top sides. Press Delete on my keyboard. Give it a second. Gave me a hard time there. Not exactly sure why. Let's see what bodies I have showing. So this is a, a lesson in naming all of your bodies. Uh, <laughs> I'm making it very difficult on myself now, instead of just going through and uh, having the right one selected. I don't know why it won't let me delete these faces. And this is one thing that I did just yesterday, and it worked perfect. I think I have everything selected there. There we go. Who knows? Um, but that's exactly what I wanted. So now I have this kind of uh, seat pan surface created. Um, I didn't create the cutouts for these rails, but you can see how the rails would ideally fit inside of here. But now what I want to do is thicken the shape. And this is another part that can kind of uh, make or break it based on the way you had gone through and designed. Sometimes it is just like the magic tool that works perfectly. Um, sometimes it is imperfect. But I'm going to say I want this to be two, mi two millimeters thick. So it's going to do a, a millimeter in each direction. Say OK. Let's give that a second to compute. Looks like that works. So now we have a thickness to our surface here. It's looking pretty darn good. What I'd really like to do is fill out this outside surface or this outside edge so it is not super sharp and ugly, say half a millimeter. Looks like we can get away with a little bit more, let's say one millimeter. That looks tremendous. Now I can turn my other body on, and you can get a kind of perspective of how that would fit inside of that other shell. And of course, this is intersecting with um, that shell at this section here. But 
in this instance, like this is going to be probably some sort of like leather or pleather material. Um, very likely that that shape is going to kind of spill into the other. I could still even go through and I don't know use this body. Sorry, use this uh, use this body to cut this um, kind of cushioned body on the top here and create a, a more realistic transition between the two. But again, the idea here was to create a fairly realistic concept of this seat, right? I, I, it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. It doesn't need to be ready for pr production. Um, I'm gonna make some more modifications here and maybe add some more rounded corners to this. Looking good. Let's add some appearances to this too. So these rails, looks like those are set for steel. That's fine. I want this bottom pan to be plastic. And I'm using just the appearance menu here. The quickest way to get to that is just A on your keyboard. Otherwise you can find that under the modify menu, appearance. So, I just have a whole list of materials inside of here, plastic being one of those. Now I can just take these materials and drag them onto the objects or bodies that I want them to be applied to. In this case, I don't want this to be white. I'd rather it be pretty much completely black. And I don't have a, a pleather material, at least not that I know of inside of here, but I think I have a plastic material that'll probably look something close. Maybe we'll just use one of these translucent ones. I'll drag that onto the shape. Let's make that a little bit darker, maybe something more of like a, a gray. Add some more complexity to it. Maybe it'd be like a hint of like purple inside of there. How about that? That is our Pretty much finished design. I'm gonna make a save here and say, have one finished. Make sure that that kind of silhouette looks good. I like that. I like that. Sometimes I like to view it in this, uh, this viewport here. Especially something like this, where it is a very aesthetic shape. You can just have everything right next to each other. Yeah, that looks pretty darn good. I like it. Maybe I'll even pull off the kind of shown edges by pressing Control-4. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe we even drop this in the uh, the rendering environment really quick. Set this to like a really clean white background. Again, to get a little bit better perspective of exactly how this is gonna look. And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Maybe we'll turn our canvas on back in this design workspace and see how close it is to, again, that final shape. And it matches pretty well. So again, maybe we didn't make the, uh, the engineers happy, but we made this design close enough to the industrial designers that they're not gonna throw rocks at us. Um, hopefully you guys learned some kind of new tips and tricks with this one. Um, this, uh, this included a lot of processes that are kind of unique. Um, I remember the first time I, I, I did this bike saddle inside of the form environment, starting it off, I was like, I don't even know what step one is going to be. And I know I would have really, really benefited from a, a tutorial like this. Um, even if this wasn't going to be my exact design, something that just gave a um, some concept of exactly how something like this would be started or begin to be designed. So um, again, hopefully you guys took something away from this. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing what you guys said in the comments. I know Wayne's been helping me out. Hopefully he was uh, helpful enough to you. And I'm looking forward to seeing um, everyone in the next one. Um, you should see me uh, probably in a couple weeks here. I don't have anything scheduled at the moment, but uh, still, Monday through Friday, we have just an incredible cast um, doing these live streams. So keep up with it. Um, 
Again, any other questions, let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, everyone stay safe and hopefully you enjoyed yourself. See ya.